We're at the Croy, the 25th Croy. Mm -hmm. We're with Thomas, Thomas Rasmussen from Aarhus University in Denmark. And you were we just presented in the, uh, a, a tidbit of the presentation you're going to be giving at the uh, meeting coming up. Is it tomorrow? It's Tuesday. Tuesday, okay. Yeah. And that is going to be on touching on the aspects of cure research. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've been doing some work with this, this work you're doing, you just said was being done while you were there with uh, Sharon Lewin in, in Australia, Melbourne, yeah, in yeah. Melbourne, yeah. So tell us about this in, in a, a way that uh, our community can understand. There's so many pieces to this mm -hmm. cure, so-called cure research, and it's important for us to understand yeah. how this is going about and, and maybe where it's leading us to. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, so one of the key questions in, in cure research or in the debate around finding a cure for HIV is to understand uh, by which mechanisms the virus is allowed to uh, persist in individuals that are taking very, very effective uh, therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, so we know and have known for some years that a tiny uh, portion of infected cells can stay quiet and hide away from the effective treatment. Mm -hmm. And such cells may persist in individuals that are infected for decades, possibly throughout their life. So this is a known and very important mechanism of virus persistence on therapy mm -hmm. called HIV latency. And we were looking at another potential mechanism of persistence. Uh, and that mechanism is the question of whether there is, despite effective therapy, still ongoing cycles of virus replication. So the virus is, is uh, expanding itself despite uh, therapy. Mm -hmm. This is something that's been debated quite intensely mm -hmm. for maybe the past 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it occurs at all during effective therapy, and if it occurs, is it something that's contributing to long-term persistence of the virus? So would this be recognized by going down to one copy per millimeter of blood, or, or, or is this a different so, way to identify? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, so, so yeah, the concepts are so difficult to separate here. We can measure tiny bits of virus in plasma, mm -hmm. even in patients that are on suppressive therapy. So the question here is understanding which source is putting out that virus. Is it just you know, long-lived cells that occasionally spit out the virus, or is it because cells continue to produce virus and that virus go on to infect new cells and so forth? Mm -hmm. That, that uh, second process is what we call residual replication. Mm -hmm. That is that the replication cycle continues at a very low level, although patients are taking very effective therapy. Mm -hmm. If that occurs, that's a separate mechanism that we have to target to achieve a cure. So that would be in a compartment? It could, it, could be be in a com it could be in a compartment, yeah, definitely. So that's, that's up for debate whether that residual replication during suppressive therapy is happening. Mm -hmm. And if it's happening, is it, is it contributing to long-term persistence? Mm -hmm. So we just did a study to investigate that question. Mm -hmm. And the way we did this was to do a randomized clinical trial. Mm -hmm. So we randomized study participants to either take a dolutegravir, which is a relatively new and very, very potent mm -hmm. integrase inhibitor, and put it uh, onto their already suppressive ART regimen. That was half the study participants, and the other half just got placebo. Uh, and we then measured whether this intensification of therapy, uh, whether that led to any change in virus activity, or any change in separate measures of uh, HIV persistence, or any change in the immune response to the virus immune activation. Mm -hmm. And we, we knew that if it, if it would happen, we would see that effect, you know, just occasionally. So we had to perform very frequent blood yeah. samples. How often was that done? So within the first two weeks, we, we had blood samples at day zero, day one, day three, day seven, and day 14. So you might imagine we asked the patients to come in for quite frequent mm -hmm. visits mm -hmm. during the trial. So a lot of times, I mean, we've, we've seen blips. Is that, is that what you're referring to as blips, Would that, or is that different? It's actually, different. we're actually looking for a different molecule uh, than virus in plasma. We also did look for virus in plasma, mm -hmm. but in this particular study, we were looking for a particular virus intermediate that we expected to increase transiently and then drop again. Mm -hmm. And if 
that had increased transiently uh, that could have been interpreted as we were blocking virus activity that prior to the study was ongoing at a low level. Mm -hmm. But just to cut it short, we didn't see any effect. Yeah. We didn't see any difference between the two study groups yet. Mm -hmm. So what is your next step uh, to, uh, to move forward with, with what you've gained? Um, so I think we haven't, we haven't planned new studies in this arena. Mm -hmm. you know, around understanding the mechanisms. Uh, but we're now sort of, we're planning towards uh, studies uh, that are looking at uh, therapies that might help the immune system fight the virus. That's some of the studies that are coming on. Well, the, uh, it's not the virus stupid, it could be immunology. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's been back and forth. No, it's the early back. days of HIV, that was what it was, was back and forth, immunology, yeah. HIV. Yeah. But it, it seems as though it's, it's, it's all of it. And this is a small building block to the cure. It's, it's, there's so many, I don't know if we knew up front when we said, okay, now we're earnestly gonna be looking at the cure. We always look at the cure. Mm. But this is the realistic moment where they said there can be a cure. We mm. think there can be a cure. But there's still so many pieces that like this are unanswered and then are mm. answered in a way that you've got now one more piece of, what you might call some certainty. Yeah. That you know what is what. Mm. But is there any, I mean, there, there's gotta be a lot of this out there that, yeah. is, that, yeah. is, that is, needs to be answered. There's this philosophy that if you, when you answer a question, you have 20 more yeah. every yeah. time you, so. Yeah. But that gets to be very complicated. Now you have to make a decision on what you actually can spend your resources on. Sure, sure, So yeah. it's, it's not just about what your curiosity, your curiosity dictates, it's about what you have the funds and how important that question yeah. to be answered is. Yeah, and, and, and you know, all that investment eventually has to be at the benefit of the infected uh, yeah. individuals. Yeah. So at one point, this has got to lead to something that's that, that benefits uh, mm -hmm. HIV patients. So we have yeah, to keep yeah. that in mind all the time, I think, yeah. We've, we've often said that this is, uh, I mean, there's a lot of people that are out there naysayers on there's never gonna be a cure. But you can't operate like that. You've gotta always give a little bit of hope and you have to know that these are pieces that are being learned that put us one step or half a step mm -hmm. forward. Yeah, sure. And, and then there's some steps that go yeah. backwards, but it's all learning. Yeah. It's part of what we're learning. And science moves in at a right. regular pace. Sometimes th things are quiet for a long mm -hmm. time. You have small incremental mm -hmm. steps maybe, and all of a sudden you hit right. something that's, that's right. really opening new opportunities. Right. There's, no, there's no massive uh, shock and awe this conference, but when you add up all the little pieces, so, some of which I've already learned through the opening press, press conferences, it's pretty amazing. This, mm. this, this, these are all important pieces, and they're all going to somehow or another fit together and make, like you said, a better clinical outcome yeah. down the line. And, and the, the monkey study by Dan Baruch, yeah. uh, I'm sure you're going uh, to cover uh, that. have yeah. a chat with him too. It's, it, that, lo that looks very interesting. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very keen to see him presenting yeah. the data right. during the meeting. And the other thing is that you're presenting things you've learned that are somewhat positive, uh, or things that is really important learning experience. There are a lot of people that do research that doesn't get published, but it should be because even if there's an, not a positive, mm. you know what you don't want to have to redo. You know, exactly. the randomized control exactly. trial. Yeah, yeah. Database of that yeah. is really important. I think yeah. the Cochrane collaboration proves that out uh, in le learning experience. Good or bad yeah. is a learning experience. Totally agree, yeah. totally agree. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thomas. I You're appreciate welcome. it. Yeah, me Enjoy too. the rest of the conference. Thanks, you too. Yeah.